Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am your host, James Just. With me today is author extraordinaire, Mr. John Cameron. John, how you been this last couple weeks? Last couple of weeks last have week. been interesting. Interesting, interesting. you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a long couple of weeks for me. It's but, been, yeah, you, you yeah. know, it's been a long couple of weeks for the country, as we talked about oh, last week. Oh, and it's going to get longer. Oh, my, yeah, we are in for a long, we are in for a long uh, fall, are we not? Mm. But a couple weeks ago, you know, I guess what a week or so ago now, the Teamsters dec declined to endorse a, a candidate for the election for the presidency for the presidency of these United States of America. Now, let's be clear: it's the national Teamsters, because I think some of the West Coast Teamsters went and endorsed uh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So it's you know it's the question. These the question is. They did an internal poll or internal election. I don't actually remember mm. which one, mm. but either way, the, it was something like fifty-nine percent to thirty-eight like percent, almost two to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a sixty-forty split. Yeah. yeah, that the Teamsters, the rank and file Teamsters, the members, yeah. Yeah. were supportive of Trump, while thirty-eight percent are supportive of Kamala Harris or the yeah. Democrats. Yeah. And so the Teamsters decided, well, we're not going to endorse anybody, mm -hmm. which, frankly, is what they should always do. Mm -hmm. Right, as a union whose job is to represent a wide, diverse group of people, mm -hmm. you really shouldn't be endorsing one party mm -hmm. or the other mm -hmm. in these kind of things. You think you could convince the National Education, the National, what is the National Teachers Union, the biggest teachers union? It, yeah, I don't you know. You think you could convince them not to do that? No. And they actually get government money that they yeah. give to the Democratic Party. Well, what this tells you Millions. is that the working class has shifted. Hmm. The working class is no longer in the Democrats' back pocket. No. The blue-collar worker, they're no, no longer in well, the Democrats' That's why they're trying pocket. to eliminate blue-collar jobs. Because blue-collar workers, they're trying to eliminate entrepreneurship because entrepreneurs vote either libertarian or fiscally responsible Republicans, if there are any left. I think there's 13 of them in Congress who keep saying, we're not passing this budget because you've got to do something about $35 trillion in debt. Um, and... Um, and, and uh, blue-collar workers, any uh, farmers, uh, uh, anybody in lumber, anybody in mining, anybody in manufacturing, people that actually build stuff, make stuff, create wealth, except for these clowns in, in Silicon Valley who, you know, depend upon government largesse for their monopolies, um, they support... Um, typically the Republican Party, and I don't think Trump's really a Republican. So if you'll notice which jobs are being eliminated by all the programs that the, the massive bureaucracy, the deep state, the nomenclatura do, is those. It's not an accident. Yeah. They've got a plan. That you know, is it a plan? Or, I always wonder. It's, it's, I try not to... Uh... Well, it's not... Yeah, it's not a conspiracy if everybody just believes the same stuff and does it. Right. Yeah, so they're not getting together and having, having meetings because, you know, A, they'd leak, and B, they wouldn't agree on stuff. But they just, if they all think that way, I mean, if, if all university professors went to school to be, and were taught by hard-left university professors and they had to be hard-left to get tenureship, how many of them are going to be hard-left? You know, so it's yeah. yeah. It creates it creates all kinds of yeah, problems. Yeah. And the silos are bad. And we're going to yeah. talk about education here in a minute, but we're going to stick on to uh, on to the elections, as you know, propositions are coming up. Yeah. In the next, yeah. you know, the it government. used to be illegal, propositioning someone. <laughs> well, in the state of California, it's not. But Mr. That was Richard, funny. I might use that. I know, as we know, Mr. Richard Fields has decided to. Give commentary on the propositions leading I'm up to the glad. election. Up I'm to the glad. election. Let's, and let's this week, listen to wise Mr. Fields. And this week, he's talking about Proposition 33 and 34. So mm -hmm. let's hear what Mr. Richard Fields has to say this I'd week. I'd love to hear it. It'd be nice if we could hear it in here. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the Fields. This reporter has spent literally decades promulgating the view that the Federal Reserve creation of new money, which they introduce into the economy in the form of debt, is probably the most evil and perverse thing done by the federal government. New money creation is usually necessary for inflation to occur. 
Inflation acts as a general sales tax by raising prices. Politicians love it for two reasons. First, it's a tax they can't get blamed for enacting. Second, it causes myriad distortions in the economy, which gives politicians an excuse to further meddle in the economy to help their constituents. Two of the propositions Californians will be voting for this fall demonstrate this principle. The first is Proposition 32, which would raise the minimum wage from or to $18 per hour in 2025. The market distortion minimum wage wages attempt to fix is prices rising faster than wages. And they have been. Once newly created Fed money is lent into the economy, the Fed has little control over where it will end up. Large corporations have more pricing power than low-skilled labor does. So, surprise, surprise, the cost of living has been rising faster than entry-level job wages do. Now, the politicians or their brethren in Washington, D.C., who created the problem by creating the Fed in the first place, get to mount their white horses and ride to the rescue by arbitrarily raising the minimum wage. The result will be entirely predictable. Workers lucky enough to get one of the minimum wage jobs will make a little more money, but workers with lower skills, teenagers, perhaps minorities, will end up with no job at all. A minimum wage set too far above market rates will always and everywhere result in increased unemployment among the least skilled among us, resulting in more crime and more welfare dependence. The second is Proposition 33. It would unleash local governments to impose rent control. The culprit, again, is inflation, which affects different people in different ways. The minimum wage tries to keep the cost of labor high relative to consumables. Rent control tries to keep at least one price low compared to wages. While minimum wage laws create a shortage of jobs, rent control laws create a shortage of housing. A shortage of housing will increase the already rampant problem of homelessness. Both of these problems, lack of a living wage and lack of affordable housing, should be attacked at their core, eliminating the Federal Reserve whose inflationary policies cause price shortages in the first place. In addition, California could dramatically increase the stock of housing by dramatically reforming its not-my-backyard environmental laws zoning restrictions, and complex building regulations, not to mention high property taxes. That's this week's report from the fields. I'm Richard Fields. See you again next week. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate the, your insights. And, you know, it amazes me, John, how much these, uh, these, I, I'm trying to be careful with my words here, these people want to control things when the history has proven that your attempts to control the market, your attempts to manipulate the market only lead to broken markets. Mm -hmm. And we're surprised at the results somehow. I, I there's, there's a book out about rent control that shows pictures in it at the beginning of chapters of, um, I had a copy of it and I think I gave it away, of uh, um, a basically uh, a uh, a city, an area in a city, and, and you had to guess whether it was due to a war or rent control. And, <laughs> and no, I'm serious. And in some of these inner cities, these are U.S. cities too. Um, it's you hard look to tell. at it, you look at it, and you would think, oh, that was a war. No, not a war. That's what it looked like after there was rent control and the people that built the buildings couldn't make any money, and so they were abandoned and uh, they weren't maintained and the people who were, who were in them were kind of indifferent to uh, their surroundings. And it's frightening because rent control does not work, hasn't worked. That's why there's no building that people can afford in New York City. Uh, they, you have people in New York City where I think the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is like you know three grand or something, paying 120 bucks. Yeah, and you can't rebuild any of those because it, it built re tearing down a building and build putting a new one that's more efficient and, yeah. and could hold more people. Is it? Well, no, but then you'd be able to charge a new rent for it, and they don't want to do that. Well, yeah, they'll never get you and just the permits. Yeah. yeah. And you know, but we do have an example of 
uh, of the right way to do these things down in Argentina, who is mm. taking off rent controls, who is taking off the regulations, <laughs> and, and, and housing Chainsaw. supply has has shot up dramatically. Imagine uh, that. Housing supply shot up. Uh, foreign investment shot up. Efficiencies have gone. I think they now have a balanced budget. Yeah, the budget, they balanced the budget within I like six months. I well, don't know what their inflation rate is like, but I'm sure it's way less than Venezuela's. Well, it's way less than what it was. Yeah. Yeah, Probably less than our real rate of inflation. <laughs> well, yeah. our real rate, remember, because yeah. yeah, ours is manipulated to the end. Of, oh, yeah. yeah if you end. take out uh, food and energy... What did they put? Food. They took out food, energy, and housing, and yeah. then they called the ba that rest of it the, the base the rate of inflation. Yeah. What's going up the most? Food, energy, and housing. housing and you, do they take out health care now? Hmm. I mean, how I much you want to bet they take out health care, too? Oh, yeah. How Probably. much you want to bet? Yeah. Anyway. And education. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, expensive. education, John. That's actually a good thing because, you know, we've got a good example of how the government runs things, or in this particular case, doesn't. Over runs, in New York. Runs them into the ground. Over in New York. The Chancellor of New the New York, York City, again? yeah, New York again. The Chancellor of the New York City School District is came out to his address and gave the state of the schools address. And you know what he didn't talk about? Hmm. The state of the education. Hmm. He talked about how a thousand schools or whatever it was is participating in a climate change program, hmm. and he talked about all these various other things that they're hmm. doing. But he didn't say how the students are doing, hmm. how well the, about the actual education these students are receiving. Hmm. They completely ignored that as a topic. Well, you want to talk about why. all these other programs they were doing. Yeah, and the fact that their teachers are getting paid more and they got all this money to spend on stuff and the future's bright. Except, as long as you don't need the students to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah except you're for the students. That's yeah. the real yeah. problem, yeah. right? Yeah. The students are suffering the consequences. Is that him, Chancellor yeah. David Banks? Yeah. Yeah. I bet he banks big bucks. Oh, yeah. Chancellor? Yeah. yeah. These guys bank a lot Is this of in money. New York? Yeah. I mean, how many, how many people are still in in office in New York that haven't been, haven't quit or been indicted for corruption and theft and uh, more corruption and theft, like the DA, it's just, oh Well, man. yeah, the, and these are the people who want to control our economy. These mm. are the people who want to regulate your, da your daily lives. These are the same people, the people who care more about the climate change programs the schools are participating in rather than the type of education your child is walking out mm. of those schools mm -hmm. with. And also probably making making sure they use the proper pronoun. Yeah, they're all the things yeah. that really... They're, they're not using verbal violence. The things that shouldn't matter, matter, yeah. and the things that should matter, don't. Yeah. And we live in a bizarro world. Yes, we do. It's, it's intentional. 1984, man. But there are some signs, John, that things might be swinging different ways to the courts, mm -hmm. even though I actually am inter most interested just by the topic of the, the headline? way. The, the headline? The headline. Just the headline. Oh, yeah. Just the headline. If we can bring the headline, this, the thing up. It says, Trump judge sides with employer arguing labor board is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Trump judge. Trump you never Trump. hear anybody say Obama judge. Uh, Obama judge, Clinton judge, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, Biden judge. It's always yeah. Trump judge. You notice that the, the, all the people that um, indicted... Um, uh, Mr. Trump, or former President Trump, or according to some people, current President Trump, uh, uh, in absence, absentia, were uh, appointed by uh, Clinton, Obama, or Biden. Did I miss somebody? Yeah. No, that's the yeah. oh, other yeah. state. The you know the state. Guy. And the the state commies. Yeah. 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 So they never put that in. They put in Trump judge. Yeah. Yeah. It's always yeah. it's a Trump judge, yeah. trying to disqualify the, the event. I mean, really, what, the, what was actually ruled unconstitutional what wasn't actually the, the regulations. It was how they enforced the regulations. Mm -hmm. so they became judge, jury, and executioner, but also rule maker, judge, jury, and executioner mm -hmm. of the thing. And so that's they, what was they unconstitutional. They combined which, which many recent Supreme Court decisions. And where's the camera? So, folks, you need to explain this because you might not understand. What happened was a bunch of left-wing... Um, I'm not going to call them liberal because look up the just look up the the dictionary definition of liberal and it's not what they are. They're left wing. They're uh, socialist slash communist slash uh, collectivist uh, judges got into power in the 70s and they invented all this crazy crap. And then recently, some judges who actually paid attention to the Constitution in the United States got the crazy crap thrown out. And one of them was Chevron, 
um, which said that, that any time there's any ambiguity in a government ruling or regulation, which, by the way, the, the Congress didn't, doesn't do, but the actual letter agency, then you had to find in favor of the government. And they also had these things basically called administrative law judges. So if you argue against, let's say, the SEC, or in this case, the um, labor, board. Uh, labor Board, you argued against rules that the Labor Board made in, uh, uh, in the court of a Labor Board judge. You didn't have the right to a jury trial. And you were, you were punished by fines and sometimes imprisonment by the same judge that tried the trial. So the, that's obviously patently unconstitutional. That's like the Star Chamber back from when they threw out, you know, when they uh, put some controls on kings of England. So uh, a, a judge, um, circuit judge, rightfully interpreted the law to be unconstitutional in light of the proper reading of the Constitution that the current Supreme Court has done. And so they called it a Trump judge. But uh, Trump doesn't actually, uh, those judges have to be confirmed by the Senate. So Trump might choose the judge or he might put the judge forward, but you should write in there, Senate judge sides with employer. Yeah, it's it's just from that perspective, as you know, as many of you might see my shirt over there in front. You know, the, that's the whole notion. Putting the Trump in there is to disqualify, is to make the reader mm -hmm. disqualify what he's reading right from before you even start mm -hmm. reading what happened. Well, if you're going to do that, then then the, um, the the Looney Tunes judges in New York, one who you just look at him until he's crazy, that decided Mir Miralago or whatever it's called was worth eighteen million dollars, where uh, or eighteen million dollars where uh, the banks who made loans to it and who would be happy to sell it said that it was worth 300 million dollars. So um, he's, what is he? Is he a, a, a Biden judge, an Obama judge, a Clinton judge, a uh, Cuomo judge, right? Yeah, yeah, we don't know because no one's bothered to tell us because re in, in reality it shouldn't matter, hmm. right? You should take these the details of these the cases and examine the them on themselves. And, you know, you understand how they got there, right? Because no one wants to say, like, a, if you're arguing a parking ticket, right, you don't want to have to go through a, a, no one wants to go through a jury trial over a parking ticket. I and do. So, and so you do administrative judges. And that's where the, the concept came from, yeah, right? Yeah. These things that are low level, there's no real, yeah, yeah. the consequences are minor. Yeah, but a million dollars in fine and imprisonment, you, you it, need to have access a, to. Yeah, uh, it's not yeah. a $60 parking ticket. Yeah, yeah. No. And <laughs> well, you can you can take people to small claims court um, for minuscule amounts of money. Yeah, I mean, and and if I believe that you know a jury can decide, although they're instructed um, to by judges over and over again, wrongfully so, a jury can decide that the law is wrong. They can just decide that doesn't make any sense. You're not guilty. Yeah, they can do that. Well, in the name of justice, the jury can decide anything it wants. Yeah. That's the whole point of the jury system. Yeah. The, just, the jury said, yeah, he vi technically violated the law, but, the con but in context of, of circumstances, mm -hmm. we're not going to find him guilty. Yeah. yeah. And the juries have the right to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, not in California, but... You know. <laughs> well, talk, speaking of courts, there is now another, another court leak has happened. A bunch happened. of leaks. A bunch of leaks. And this one, they claim, is worse than the Dobbs leak. It's all coming if, from Kagan. If we have to remember the, what the Dobbs leak was, the leak before the, uh, the striking down of Roe v. Yeah, Wade. Roe v. Wade. And just for Roe v. Wade purposes, I'm, I'm personally, there's a camera here somewhere. Unless That's not on you. There, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Anyway, the, um, woman, based on common law and history and everything else, uh, have, have had since the founding of this country, the, the, the right, the ability to have an abortion up to the point of the quickening, which I think is about three months. And um, deciding when that should be, I'm not smart enough to figure it out. Courts certainly aren't. Politicians certainly aren't. But uh, when Roe v. Wade happened, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, it's a terrible law. The idea was right. But the law was so upside down that they wrote, they just pulled it out of thin air. 
that she said that it, it's not going to protect women's rights for long because under, under the, the, the most minuscule amount of uh, legal scrutiny, it's not going to be held constitutional. But it never got to the Supreme Court. Well, and here's the thing. If yeah. under a Tenth Amendment reading, the government has no business man regulating that type of thing. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And so, but the courts will never make a Tenth Amendment ruling. Yeah. They just will not because oh, no, the House of Cards will come. Power away. Yeah, the House yeah. of Cards will come. Anyway, down. so now, now, uh, and they're tracing it back to Kagan. They don't have any. I don't think they have like video camera of her whispering in somebody's ears. But because of all the leaks, they when they have their conversations that they keep, they're not allowed to to have anybody in their conversations except for other Supreme Court justices, not even law clerks. But this information is getting out. So it's being released by one of the leftist judges to, um, so that the leftist publications can uh, attack the integrity of the Supreme Court because it's not leftist. If it was leftist judges doing the stuff they're doing, there wouldn't be attacked. Remember, it wasn't that long ago when Trump yeah. first came in. They said, "How dare you, you know, impugn the integrity of the Supreme Court?" Mm -hmm. And now, all of a sudden, impugning the integrity of the Supreme Court is perfectly fine. Oh yeah, yeah. It, these because they had, don't agree with it. If it wasn't for hypocrisy, these people would have no morals at all. I just, <laughs> you know, that's I, a good line. You should use that more often. These people are—they're driving me crazy. If and it we're wasn't gonna, for hypocrisy, you'd have no no moral <laughs> compass at all. Yeah. No. I, I, it's, yeah. It drives me crazy, John. Yeah. It really does. As well, it should. So we're gonna we're, more bureaucrats behaving badly, John. We're gonna talk about some more bureaucrats Still? behaving badly. Yeah. Here's we've my got... question for our audience: Find me a bureaucrat that's not behaving badly. Find me an an honest, uh, hardworking bureaucrat that has the interests of the people uh, at heart. I want to meet this person. And I want to bring up why I think this is important, right? Because we're talking about these bureaucracies, and these, these are the people who want to run your life. Mm. And so it's well, important to understand. They do run our lives. We need to understand that they are not the better angels of our nature. These no. are just the average human being. They are no different than your, than your auto mechanic. I think these guys are below average because some of the stuff they're doing is stupid. So in California, we got an official facing censure for siphoning off COVID relief funds and giving them to himself. Mm -hmm. In New York, school staff are accused of taking their own families on trips to Disneyland that were, were supposed to go to homeless children who would never have that opportunity mm -hmm. in their lives. And it specifically said in their rules they set up that you can't take friends or family. Yeah. Specifically in the rules they set up. <laughs> the, the person yeah. who set up the rule knew what was going to happen and oh, said, yeah. let's yeah. try to prevent that. And what happened? It happened anyway. Hmm. Why? Because these people really don't care about your children. They don't care I about think generic they children. Away with it. Yeah. They think they're above the law. They think the rules don't apply to them because they're part of the uh, nomenclatura, they're part of the deep state. They're untouchable. Yeah. And what are we going to? What is we as a society? We as taxpayers? We as? You're going to do a melee on them, bro. <laughs> I mean, -na 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 -na, start up that chainsaw. Well, you better start be careful, hacking. John. We talked about last last week what? about how you know political, uh, oh, political conversations. You know, the danger of political conversation. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, well, words are so Words, supposedly words are violent. dangerous now, John. You know. No, I'm not talking about chainsawing people. I'm talking about chainsawing agencies. <laughs> Just eliminate the agency that all the parasites work for, and the parasites are gone. I'm not saying hurt the parasites. <laughs> Although, if you made them follow the letter of the law, many of them would be in prison. But what I'm saying is just eliminate the whole agency or organization they work for. Eliminate their power over our lives. People will make good decisions without somebody making bad decisions for them. Yeah, Ooh, and, I should write that one down. And they manipulate. It, it's, yeah. They don't understand that when they manipulate the economy, when they manipulate the culture. They screw it up. They, they don't understand. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and the reaction We're you expect. Talk about that. The reaction mm -hmm. you expect is not necessarily going to be the reaction you no. get. Well, it's never when politicians do it because they don't understand. All right, so we've got like three minutes left, John. So actions have consequences. Yeah, baby. So travelers, uh, this is one of these things I thought people should have done a long time ago. Yeah. Travelers are filing a class action lawsuit against the anti-Israeli activists who are blocking traffic to get to airports. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of these things that people should have done to these people who block traffic, trap mm. people on freeways. They should have been doing this a long time ago. Mm. This is easy. These are, you find oh, it's it, easy. 
Yeah, you drag them through the... the, the well, it's if, if, um, if an individual did it and didn't call it a political action, it would be uh, industrial sabotage, and they would be liable for uh, damages, right? If you sabotage a transportation network... I mean, if I were, were to go outside and, I don't know, put something in the way of one of the light rails, and I, I would go to jail. But as long as I say, Israel's bad, nothing happens to me. No, you can't do that, folks. Yeah? Yeah, and so nothing wants to happen to them. And protesters, down in, um, UC, well, not UCLA, like, oh, what was it? UCLA, uh, Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. I think it was Columbia. Yeah, well, they are now Just starting pick to... pick a school. <laughs> some of these protesters in one of the schools that have some of the more extreme protesters, they are, they're not getting... Their grants, they're not mm -hmm. getting their new jobs, they're having difficulty mm. in life. They're not life. getting their grades, they're and not getting their transcripts, they're not basically passing their test because they, they sat in a quad and sang Kumbaya for uh, four months. So they say they're being picked on. And they're, they, they, they say that this kind of stuff is reprisals against them. No, it's consequences for them sabotaging the educational efforts of others and for themselves. They well, should have been in class studying. These are the same people who a couple years ago were talking know, about consequence culture. Pagers. Remember the, the consequence culture mm. from a couple years ago? These yeah. are the same people who other people have to pay consequences for their words mm. and, for their, and mm. for their actions, but we shouldn't have to. Mm. But you know, something that about the, the protesters of the 60s understood mm. is that there were consequences to mm. protesting. They understood there were consequences mm. to protesting and they were willing to pay them. Mm. These students nowadays... Until they snuck into universities and became professors or snuck into the APA and became the regulators controlling our lives. Yeah, but they didn't whine about it, John. No. They actually went to work. They rebuilt they, their... They, they womaned their, up and manned up. Yeah. They personed up. They accepted the... They didn't wear masks. <laughs> they proudly flaunted yeah. their revolution. And that's what they wanted. If you look at some of those old films, you might see me in them. Uh, Music's telling me, John, we are almost out of time. That was a good show. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for, for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Please remember to love everybody. Especially.